Coming up on this episode of Don't Panic, we've got the week's technology news for you, including Yahoo and their disastrous financials and the companies that still want to buy them. We also talk about Twitter's new deal with the NFL, Facebook's new focus on video, and what might be Amazon's new Kindle. Uh, it'll be all that tech news and some fun banter here on another episode of Don't Panic. Stick around. This is Don't Panic, episode number 128. Recorded April 11th, 2016. On the Kindle readers, the message sharers, and the football streamers. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast uh, that knows better than to put a bid in for Yahoo. I'm Sean Jennings, joined <laughs> as always by uh, the guy to my right and the guy to my left. It is, I gotta point in the right direction, it is Dan Miller and Colby Rabideau. Oh, Hello. Yeah. If you're not watching the video, then you don't really... I'm pointing at them. You, you'll just have to take my word for it, audio listeners. Sean's pointing in every direction, though, so I'm he's just, covering all of his bases. I mean, they're not literally... He, I'm not <laughs> pointing at them. I'm kind of just pointing at, like, walls. We should do an in-person one we, at some point. We really need to. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get in the studio with the mics. We, we yeah. need to, like, rent out a legit recording studio for the day. <laughs> and what we do is we bring in Matt, and we just do all three shows, like, in a super marathon. Right, right, really like a cool. real recording session. Yeah. Have we ever have we ever done Don't Panic or any podcast 100% in person? Absolutely not. No. I don't think we've even done Oh, I have I had one guest in studio with me yes. that one time. Yeah. Well, we that, didn't. Yeah, I was I was it. at your apartment once for for that's the podcast. Right. Yeah. That's but right. That's as close as we ever got. Shame on us. We got Well, it's we hard. Could... Remember remember back uh I've been listening to podcasts for since, okay, this will be a fun one, <laughs> 2005. Uh, back then, all the podcasts I listened to were either single person or all the people went to someone's house physically and recorded it in the same space. I don't, I don't know why. Was Skype just like not a thing or was bandwidth too limited or something? Hmm. Also, of course, no video. Like, pfft. Right. Well, YouTube Never. wasn't a. Th I mean, it wasn't a. These weren't things. Yeah, YouTube wasn't a. Th when did YouTube? Did YouTube come out in two thousand five? I don't know. It was. It was right around there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, February two thousand five. Yeah. Hmm. Bought by Google. Uh, just a year and a half later, a year and a half after it started. For for a billion, wasn't it a billion? A real, uh, just over a billion dollars. Yeah. At the time, everyone yeah. thought it was crazy. Everyone thought yeah. they were insane. A yeah. billion dollars for this little company? I remember that. <laughs> that was a good move. That Well, well I guess. I mean, to be fair, they could have driven it into the ground. So, you know, they they thankfully went the right way. But, yeah, that is kind of yeah. crazy. I would love to go back and track some of these billion dollar tech purchases so, and see how many are still around. Did you see my other idea for a draft? I did. I, so my idea was we did the movie draft. And I was trying to think of other things that happen regularly and have a, a, a monetary value associated with them over a period of time. Uh, or, or some sort of value. It doesn't have to be monetary. Uh, some sort of metric to judge them. And I thought you could do startup IPOs, but they don't, they don't announce them that far in advance. Like, they announce them mm. a couple months in advance, two or three months maybe. Uh... So I thought that would be a cool idea, though. Much that harder. I, interesting. Yeah. You would get you get a uh, far more duds than I suspect even the summer twenty sixteen movies will have. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of duds there. It's it's a t oh come on everyone loved Hardcore Henry Dan what are you talking about? Uh, are there reviews are there, for that out yet? Reviews for that? Um, I don't know about reviews, but since you brought it up, I would you like <laughs> to know how everyone's doing in the draft? Absolutely. Yes. We're, we're doing. Is a, there a link that I can see it? Boy, is there up for debate uh -oh. TV slash draft, and you can go there, and we've got a nice little embedded sheet that gives you the. I do, and I actually just updated the first box office figures before we came on. Um, this is the Up for Debate 2016 Summer Movie Draft. The three of us are in it with a couple other folks. Our our number one person right now is Matt with The Boss, $23 million. Uh, and in second place is Dan with Hardcore Henry, just $5 million. Um, those are the only movies released at this point, though this weekend, 
uh, we've got uh, a big release. Our, our first, what I would argue, our biggest big release for the summer, The Jungle Book, which I own. Yeah, you do. Which I do You're... believe will put me yeah. in first place until Captain America comes out. Mm -hmm. At which Captain point I will be America? crushed. Oh, Dan has Captain America. He does. Which is amazing to me that he only got it for thirty nine dollars. Yeah, but that neutered my ability to get anything else. It did. It did. I just thought the bidding would have been more competitive to raise it above that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I paid thirty six like for Finding Dory. The problem. The problem was like Captain America was so far at the beginning. It like was. there were so it was hard to justify in my mind at least as a bidder. <laughs> it was hard to think about like. How much do I want to pay for this versus like not having any any funds left for the end? Well, I know there are some people who do this who do random. But the problem with that is it, you're you're totally obliterating any kind of strategy because you know you could have a huge movie come up right up front, or you could have a huge movie come in the end or in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think it's much more difficult, so I wanted to just keep right. it chronologically maybe next time yeah. but um i have i have some really interesting ideas for how to uh rank my how to plan out my bidding next time yeah yeah this is gonna be we'll fun see. as a regular I think, thing i hope it so, gets crazy <laughs> so do we do another one for the next six months after the summer well there is some people do a winter movie draft we we absolutely can. It's just not as many movies, and they're not as big and flashy. But we certainly can. Not as big and flashy. But you know what? There that are can... two big movies coming out. This what what were the two I'm thinking of? There's usually uh, only three or four. Where the movie you'll get eight or ten big movies. You'll only get three or four. Uh, so you got another Star Wars movie. Uh, there's a new Harry Potter movie coming that out. That is true. Uh, well, I, can, I can look and see. Those are just the ones I care Harry about. Potter. I care about like yeah. The, uh, the trailer came out for that today, I think. Uh, it looks pretty legit. Uh, focuses on the guy who wrote the the, uh, the book about the all the animals. Fantastic oh. piece of trying to find them. Fascinating. It, but it also takes place in the 1920s, it looks like. And in the trailer, they reference Dumbledore. And I'm like, how? Dumbledore could, if he was even alive, could not have been in any position of power. I guess, I guess, when did the Harry Potter trilogy, like trilogy, when did the series end chronologically, like in Harry Potter universe time? I have no idea. I guess it could be. I don't know. They didn't. I don't. Don't think they really like the the time was not super relevant. At least not the time in relation to now. Right, but we uh, know that, man, this this is going off the rails here, Sean, <laughs> if you're ready. We know that Dumbledore is alive for World War II, because they, they make reference to that. Do they? I don't they remember do. that. They do, they do. Uh, I forget exactly how, but it has to do with uh, Dumbledore and, what's his name, Griswold or something? Mm. Gottwald, his like old childhood friend who also turned evil. Like and that's apparently part of some broader human conf conflict around that time. Interesting. They, that's always been the theory, but hmm. so he must have been like his twenties then, at that point, which would make him five for. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Oh. Maybe he has a uh, the philosopher's stone. <laughs> Maybe he just lived for a really long time because he was like a wizard. Yeah. Shit. A oh, wizard and shit. I, I don't. I don't know how. We're, All right. So, what movies are coming out this winter? The, the only big quote unquote movies would be uh, Assassin's Creed, the movie, okay, uh, and and Doctor Strange. I think that's gonna be terrible. Doctor Strange. Wait, wait, wait. What about Star Wars and Harry Potter? Oh, you already mentioned those. Oh, okay. That so yeah, movie. uh, they're doing an animated trolls movie, but like the 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 doll trolls, like the little pencil oh. topper trolls. No. <laughs> um, it, it looks awful. Um, let's see what else is in here. Um, they're making another Underworld movie. They're making I didn't another Jerry Winter movie. Remember, remember, the Ouija, remember the Ouija board movie? Yeah. They're making another one of those. Thank God. They're making another... You remember The Ring? Uh, uh, yes. Where, where you watch a tape, yes. you die in seven days. Remember that one? Uh, they're making another yep. one of those. Um, what else is in here? Remember, remember Bridget Jones' Diary? Nope. They're making another one of those. Um, 
They we got a Johnny Depp film with Tim Burton. <laughs> or no, Johnny Depp's so, not in it, but it is Tim Burton. <laughs> you just assume. <laughs> I mean, is it, is it possible for them to make films that are not based on some other story or film? Well, the, well, Cole, unclear it, to me. If you're looking for something not based on an existing franchise, how about the how about Deepwater Horizon, the movie about the BP oil spill, starring Mark Wahlberg? Sounds thrilling. <laughs> oh, and they have a sequel to the 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 movie about the board game where he predicts the future. Yeah, the Ouija board uh, movie. Ouija. I never know how to say that. I was just trying to trick someone else into saying it. <laughs> there's uh there's there's so much going on. We're we're really gonna have to think hard about if we want to do uh, if we want to do a draft. But yeah. we might. I'm not gonna make any promises, but we'll see. In the meantime, we got a lot of summer left, so Indeed. we won't get. We, to, we, we have get to like all of the summer left. I know. <laughs> Dan, Dan, Dan's like, please don't let head hardcore Henry define my summer, <laughs> please. Uh, which is completely understandable, because um, you only uh, well, you spent twelve bucks. Yeah, whatever. They can't all be winners, and that's why I like this last column, which is gross to purchase price ratio, because it'll tell you who got the best deal. Yeah, mm, nice. So, anyway, that's up. I might still win that one. Um, with which movie? With Captain America. Oh, see, I thought you were gonna say Pete's Dragon. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, considering the buckets of money it's going to make. I mean, um, I spent... How much did I spend on that, though? On uh, Captain America? You spent 39 bucks. No, no, no. On Peach Dragon. Oh, you spent 27 so not a chance. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, just quickly scanning this, if I had to guess who's going to have the best bargain, I think it's Ice Age at 4 bucks. Yeah. I, I, I think you, the, the fourth Ice Age movie. Um, Who has that Mike. One? Mike bought it. Oh, Mike. And I'm telling you, I think at four bucks, it's not going to make a ton of money, but at a per dollar basis, I think yeah, he's going to do quite yeah. well. Yeah, or maybe, maybe Dan with Free State of Jones. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, go back, listen to the draft. Right, haters. Episode 48. Check Free State out. of Jones is going to be the breakout success. Oh, sure. Because everyone loves a historical drama with Matthew McConaughey in the middle of summer. Yes, they do. Because when they're when they're sitting around thinking, hmm, should I go see Finding Dory or Warcraft? They're gonna go see Free State of Jones. Hey, some people will. I hope. <laughs> Dan's like, I will. I need the money <laughs> in my draft. Um, I'm not, I won't. Up for debate. TV slash draft. I, I I will not see any of these movies on purpose. <laughs> I, <laughs> or just I'm not just, interested. I just yeah. Not a single one has you interested. Come on, be honest. I, was, I, I still haven't seen Avengers 2. Oh, you didn't miss much. Yeah, so I don't know. Captain America Civil War, maybe, but... That's it? That's it. Oh. How about you, Colby? You see, be- so see, last year, the movies I saw last year mm-hmm. were uh, Mad Max, Jurassic World, only because I had literally nothing else to do, it was Pouring Rain, and uh, Star Wars. That was it. Um... I think so. I don't think I'll see Captain America. Uh, if the reviews are really won't. good, like if it's like a ninety yeah, plus percent, I mean, I mean I'll- yeah, maybe if it's amazing. I mean, I guess I can't count anything out. I suspect I might go see Pop Star unless it gets really bad reviews, mm-hmm. um, because I, I and Jill enjoy. Andy Samberg doing that sort of stuff, I think. Um, Sandy Anberg? Yes. Sandy yes, Hamburger? Sandy. What? <laughs> uh, I I will see a bunch of these movies eventually. That's what It's it just like, it's not clear whether I'll go see them in the theater. I'll probably end up going to see like Jason Bourne and or Star Trek with my dad because those are both uh, movies that he likes to go see. Uh, I'd also, I'm interested in seeing, I, I bet I'll see Ghostbusters in the theater and I'll, I may, oh. I might see Secret Life of Pets in the theater. Cause I but think you would not see Suicide amazing. Squad in the theater. I forgot about Suicide Squad. Maybe Suicide Squad, but I don't, I don't think so. You're right. If, if Ghostbusters and Suicide Squad are good, I would be more likely to see those over Captain America. Mm-hmm. 
I'm trying to think. Last year, all I saw in theaters, it was just uh, Star Wars and Ant Man. I think were the only movies I saw in theaters. Um, and I this summer, I will. I guarantee I will make a point to see Captain America and X Men um, because I'm big fans of both. Um, movies I would like to see and probably won't. Um, Ghostbusters definitely. Um, Warcraft, I'm actually kind of interested in. It I don't know if I'll see it in theaters. That bad. But it seems like the movie you want to see on a big screen, though. Like, yeah, I feel like yeah. Avatar did this. Watch Avatar, like, when it runs on FX a million times a weekend uh, <laughs> on your TV. It doesn't look good. It doesn't. Well, that, it looks like that a was bunch like, of blurry CGI. This weekend, Sean and I were watching the TV cut of Wanted. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's <laughs> Wanted? So bad. Is that, that Angelina it's, Jolie it's, and uh, James McAvoy? It was the one where they curved the bullets. Oh, God, that movie was terrible. Oh, it was terrible, but it's even worse when you're watching the TV cut. The TNT cut. Oh, yeah. my God. They couldn't swear. and it, Oh, I forgot how, just how shitty that movie was. Every line. They couldn't swear? No, yeah. They can't swear and, and, in TV anymore? Not Well, you can't say the F word in TV. Oh. And so they would do the worst dub overs where their lips wouldn't match and they'd be like, That's flipping ridiculous. You know? Really? They would oh, dub yeah. it over? Oh yeah. Oh, Not yeah. well. Poorly. Have, have you ever Who, did they they didn't bring Angelina Jolie back to do the dub over, I'm guessing. I think they did actually. Oh wow. Because because they know ahead of time these are probably gonna get cut for T V, so I think they just do it as they make the movie. <laughs> but I will say, Dan, if you if you're not familiar with the wonders of made for TV edits, do me a favor, at some point, go on YouTube and look up Snakes on a Plane TV Edit. <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny because it's uh, it's constantly swearing. So that's my free gimme to everybody is check out. Oh, thank you. Check that out because they do a very poor job. Um, uh, I, I want to watch it right now. But you can't, Dan, because we got to talk about the technology news. That's uh, why true. we're here. Did you forget? We do it every week. And we've got. Hang some... on, is Tracy Morgan in this in this movie and Snakes on a Plane? I don't think so. Oh, Maybe who is the? Parody. No, there. There is a certain famous black comedian in here, but I don't know who it is. Oh. Definitely. All right. Anyways, technology news. Technology news. Let's do it. What's uh? We we got a pretty pretty. It's not really a thin rundown because I think it's. Oh, it's there's a new quantity, Kindle. It's deep. Well, there might be, so it hasn't been officially uh, announced, but there's been a leak, and we can talk about the leak if you'd like. Yeah, let's talk about it. I haven't let's, seen this at all. Let's talk about the leak. So um, now, maybe coming to a store near you soon, and by store, I mean Amazon.com. It's not actually a store. Um, hey, tell that to their Seattle bookstore location. <laughs> where, I'm, where I'm sure you can buy the new Kindle Oasis. What do you get for that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, it leaked on a uh, foreign web page. I can't tell what country it's from. It's not in English. Um, but here's what we do now. And I've got a picture up on screen for the folks watching the video version. Um, it's got, the most noticeable thing is it's got a big chunk on the one side of it, right? It's got like almost like a handle you can kind of grab where it's thin on one side and chunky on the end. Kind of like, um, what was the self, was it Motorola? Somebody had a smartphone where the camera at the end had a big bump where it kind of stuck out. Same idea. Um, and the idea being that you hold that the large bezel on the right or the left side. It's got two buttons on it, what I, I'm assuming is page forward and page back. Um, and it's got all the guts in it and the battery and all that kind of stuff are just in the side. So it makes it thin wherever you're not holding it. Um, a 300 uh, PPI screen, uh, which is very sharp apparently, and a 60% increase in the number of LEDs inside so it's even brighter. Um Roughly, again, this is all translated from a leak, so take it for what's why worth. Why do you need why do you need brighter LEDs if it's e ink screen? Um, because it's well, e ink on its own does not light. Correct. So you need the backlighting. The reason I think you would have more is not not due to necessarily brightness, but to uniformity. Mm. Because you're just cramming more into a into the same space. So it's not that you're adding brightness, it's that you're adding uniformity because you're spreading out the LEDs better. Gotcha. That I makes guess. Sense. I don't know. Um, it's 20% lighter, thinner. Um, the other big deal uh, is that it comes with a rechargeable battery case, or you buy it separately, I'm not sure. Um, but this allows, are you ready for this, the Kindle to have, brace yourself, 20 months 
of standby time. Yes. Oh, Mind blown. my God. Isn't that amazing? This is so. Yeah, this is the point where that your Kindle dies and you've long since lost the charger. So you just buy a new one. Exactly. It's very smart. It it's very smart. That's amazing. It's crazy. The uh, they the new case, which has a battery in it, attaches with magnets. Um, they say a new Kindle Sleep mode contributes to the battery longevity. Uh, it's a dual battery system, which means the internal battery and the case work together. Um, so when you charge the device while it's in the case, it actually charges both the device and the case at the same time. Um, Sweet. That's what we know. Very cool. um, no word on what it will be. In that. I believe it's coming soon, because Jeff Bezos tweeted that there was an event coming up. Um, he said details next week, and he said that last week. So... Um, who knows exactly when this will be announced, but likely soon. Excellent. Colby. Uh, yes, sir. You can say that you'll only talk about this at the end, but have you tried like reading books on your new schmancy iPad yet? Yes. Is is it noticeably better as I have read, like in terms of glare and stuff? Yeah, so it's I mean, to a certain extent it's hard for me to say in that I didn't really use my current iPad for stuff or I haven't used my i my my old iPad for anything other than like playing music or podcasts while it's stuck to my refrigerator <laughs> in years. Mm -hmm. Um but it is nice. And I, you do like it it's the true tone stuff like the adaptive color thing that that it does. Um it's one of those yeah. things like flux where you don't notice it day to day, but if you turn it off, it's like, oh wow. Uh, uh -huh. So it's it's cool. It's definitely the glare is definitely not as bad as uh, I don't know other. Yeah, Apple the true tone are. stuff was what I was thinking of. Gotcha. Yeah. No, it's cool. It's noticeable. It's not. I mean, it's not a Kindle. Like I would never choose to read on my iPad over a Kindle. Okay. Um, but except in, I don't know, very specific situations where it was more convenient. Mm -hmm. All right. So then let, question answered. So let me ask a question. Yeah. Does that mean if you were provided with both a Kindle and an iPad, you would travel with both? I would, so I would consider traveling with both and not a laptop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's fair. But, but, but my, that's my what I do. Is, I don't bring my laptop on any non-business travel. But you app. wouldn't just read on the iPad. You would actually bring both. It's oh, that absolutely. big of a difference. Yeah. And the battery. Like, the battery is the thing. Hmm. Like, you can take your Kindle on a two-week trip and the battery will never die. Especially in the, as someone who reads exclusively on an iPad, the thing that really kills you on a Kindle is when you're reading uh, in the sunlight. Like, on, even on, like, a train where you want the mm -hmm. white background it just really kills the battery having that thing like at any brightness with a completely white page mm -hmm. yeah um yeah so no i would i would absolutely like if i had to choose between just an, a kindle and an ipad I would, I would absolutely choose a kindle fair enough fair enough i haven't used an e-ink kindle in years um, I, I either get paper books still or I uh, read on the uh, on the iPad. So paper books. I was just curious. I know actually I just yeah, ordered. I, some. I heard I heard your uh, your discussion about this on on up for debate, and I was a little shocked to be honest. Honest, I mean, I you know maybe if I had a Kindle, it would be different. But to me, one of the things I really like is... Well, what I'm excited about is I'm going to get a bookcase. I'm going to display all my books, which I'm excited about. But I kind of just like the the feeling of holding them. I'd be curious mm -hmm. what it's also like. Because I, I, as I knock all the stuff over while I reach out with my arms. Um, I've got my old um, mini, which this is the... Not, I don't think this is... It's either the original mini or the second mini. It's still a little chunkier. It's a little heavier than the new ones. Mm -hmm. Um... And so I don't know if uh, a newer one might perform better, um, especially with the, the upgrades they've made in the screen sense. But um, but I just it's not as as good reading on it. And to be honest, the other problem I have is that 
buying books through the Kindle store is just as expensive or more expensive than the print versions. Like, I'm not even kidding, especially. But you get it immediately. But, you know, I'll wait, honestly. Uh, and the uh, other uh, thing uh, is that. I will I, never wait. I, <laughs> I need it now. No, me either. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, when I finish the next Expanse book, I am going to buy the next one immediately. immediately. Yeah. Immediately. And that's fair. And, and I do get that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, I, I like the feel of paper, but also there's just this weird thing in my head that, you know, I don't own those books that I buy. Really? I don't like even the music I buy, I can download an MP3 copy and, and own it locally. But those books, if someone steals my Amazon password and they have to shut down my account, I don't own those books anymore. I, I know it's kind of a weird thing. And in most cases, no, it won't happen. I I mean, I understand. Uh, the I so on the one hand, will you ever read those books again? Sometimes I do. Maybe actually, I'm a big right. rereader. That's a, okay. So for me, I rarely reread books. But then they should uh, rent. So, why don't they rent books like at a discounted rate? Seriously. Yeah. The technology I don't know. exists. I I so I will say I would certainly love it if I could just like. I guess you can. You can download like the EPUB version of your Kindle books, right? Like I could just download those and and back them up. Can you? I don't know. I would love it if I could do that. Right. That uh, would be great. And, right. And you uh, could open them so, in any ebook reader. It didn't have to be Amazon's app. I don't even care if it's any ebook reader as long as I could do it. Uh, but yeah, I mean that would be awesome if I could pay for it and it was actually mine. The problem, I mean, this is a, a weird philosophical thing, but the problem is this publishing thing where it used to be the case that, like, with physical books, you're not paying for the book; you're paying for the medium in which you're reading the book, right? And and the problem, like, that's come up in music and video and all of this digital content is the medium is no longer worth anything. The medium is effectively free it's completely mm -hmm. worthless uh but you know people still want to get paid for this so it's much more complicated and that's why we have like stuff like drm and and ebooks that you can't download or can't look at anywhere because um they're trying to like enforce this this imaginary tax on a medium that is doesn't cost anything anymore um and i find that frustrating <laughs> So here's my, my approach to this, and I think I mentioned this before. I buy the physical copies of books that I really, really like, because in part because of this fear, Sean, that I like it so much that I, I will reread it many, many, many times, and I want to have it. I want to be able to give it to someone and say, no, trust me, I love this book. Here, take it. Uh, and because it's a cool thing to have, like you're talking about a bookshelf. Like Someone's bookshelf is an expression of an expression of themselves in a certain way, what what books you have bought, what books you choose mm -hmm. to display, uh, the, the the physical condition of your books, like they're really worn or are they just sort of like clearly uh, uh, bedraggled uh, or are they pristine? Are you a pristine book reader? You know, the people who like, they can't open the cover yeah. all the way so yeah. they don't get a you know, crease you, you in don't the body. Right, you kind of, yeah. Right, right, right. So it, it's like artwork. It's like it's like hanging pictures on the wall. Uh, the downside of all of this is that uh, you don't get it instantly. It's a bunch of shit that fills up your apartment that doesn't really do much for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't. It's very difficult to bring all this away. If you go on vacation for a month, right? Something I've been known to do. There's no way I'm going to bring a month's worth of books with me on this vacation. Like I have a hard enough time bringing one book. Because then you're trading off. Like you could bring a small book, but that small book's not going to last you very long. Uh, you could bring a, a big book that's going to take up a lot of rook, a book, uh, room in your backpack. So I, I like my compromise. And the other benefit I see in this is I'm giving the artist. I like to think extra money. Like, oh, cool! I really like your book, author. I bought it on Kindle, and I'm going to buy the hardcover again. Yeah, as a very selfish person, um, I uh, <laughs> my my strategy is always if the digital version isn't sixty percent or less cheaper than the print version, I'll get the print version, um, unless there's a noticeable price difference. That's really now, what it comes down to. Now I, you also don't do digital music, right? 
Oh, I do. I, I do digital. Oh, okay. I well, thought you were saying you buy CDs. Well, I do, but now Am uh, Amazon does that thing where they give you the MP3s for free, and the price is about the same. Mm -hmm. So you get the physical so copy essentially for free. So that was something I was fascinated to learn about movies. Like I, I bought the Star, the new uh, Star Wars Force Awakens on Blu-ray. Yeah. I've never owned a Blu-ray before. I haven't bought a physical movie in, I don't know, like eight years. Like since I was in high school, probably. Um, and now you get like at least with Disney. Disney, you like get a code with your movie and not only do you get a digital copy, which I knew they did, like I knew they did digital copies on like random services like Vudu or something that I don't use, mm -hmm. but you can get, you get, you basically get a code, you log into Disney's online portal and, and you can act, connect to like your iTunes and you'll get it in iTunes or Amazon, you get it in Amazon. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Google Play also. Yeah. yeah, right. Like basically anywhere you would watch it, not just weird services. So that's like a plus for me to buy a movie because while I want a, d well, I like the idea of having a DVD for a movie like Star Wars, which I, I feel strongly about. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like the idea about having to like being beholden to a DVD player all the time because that's lame. Um, did you watch the uh, documentary on the Blu-ray yet? So this is the other thing that the Blu-ray gets you that none of the digital feed, like the Blu-ray gets you in almost every case extra stuff. Yep. And in the Blu-ray world, like if you're, if you get an extra disc of bonus content, like you do in a Star Wars movie, that's like, that's like hours of, that's mm -hmm. a movie's pluses worth of stuff mm -hmm. on that, which is the case in Star Wars. Like, I watched the first documentary. I was like, oh, cool. That was a fun hour. And then I was like, oh, wait, there are like eight more things after this that I could watch. <laughs> uh, nice. I'll have to check that out. That's I just watched, I watched Star Wars. I watched the movie itself again. The, the documentary is really, really good. Uh, like nice. almost as good as the Lord of the Rings special features. Almost as good. I That's why I still get Netflix DVDs for the bonus mm, features. Nice. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's really, it's really See, but, worth it. <sighs> I don't, I don't know, get, again, I don't know if I want, I don't want to watch special features almost ever. Like, mm -hmm. I, what, what's a movie I watched recently? Uh, like, I watched, uh, uh, what was the Wes Anderson movie that's not Grand Budapest Hotel? Uh, anyways, like one of them. Static? Nope, the he other one. Sunshine? Shining oh, um, Kingdom, something. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom, yeah. Sunrise, oh, yeah, Moonrise yeah. Kingdom, Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, Moonrise Kingdom. Great movie, loved it. Uh, but I didn't really want to watch the special features. Right. But like something like Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or a movie, I I really fell in love with. I could be like, I I need to watch the special features. Yeah. And then maybe, then I would just buy the movie at that point. Like, yeah. So do you watch? Sean, you get you you uh, you rent Mad Max. Yes. You got the DVD. Yes. Did you watch the special features? No, because I didn't like the movie, so uh, I felt no need to follow through. But, but I but, own Blu-rays, and I've yeah, gotten, me too. And I've gotten them on Netflix, and I do. And and I I think I've said this before on the show. Um, one of the things I I a nerd really enjoy is um, TV series on DVD. Because m many of them, not all of them, many of them have commentary on every episode and behind-the-scenes featurettes. And, and if you're Futurama, awesome. They, they do commentary. Matt Groening and all those guys do commentary on every single episode. It's fascinating. It's like watching uh, – it's like getting twice the episodes because they're two totally – you watch it without the commentary and with. So that kind of stuff I really do enjoy Yeah, because I'm kind of a, a nerd. So uh... – just a loop back quickly to the book stuff. Uh, I do like there are books that I I theoretically would like to own. And for a long time until the very recent past, it was more that uh, the thing keeping me from buying those books was less that I wanted. Like I didn't want a physical copy and more that I moved around so frequently. It right. did not seem worth it to me to ever own a book. Uh, because if you're moving a lot, it's a huge pain in the ass. Like books are really dense and they take up a lot of space. Um, and if you live in a tiny place, the, the worst part about physical books is that they're physical, right? right. <laughs> I, I 100%, it's a pain in the yeah. ass. 
So that that is why for for all of college and in the last couple years, that has been part of my rationale for never buying physical books. But there are certain books that like particularly like graphic novels, which are just silly. I would never want to own a digital copy of that. Um, so do you still read the saga books, Colby? Oh, my God. I actually Get never started head. the saga books. Dan, why did you bring that up? You never started them? Hold on, Sean. No, I, ha- I haven't read them at all. I considered it, but but when we were first talking about it, this was at a time where I, I strictly did not buy physical books, so I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. You suck. Yeah. I mean, it's bound to happen at some point, right? Yeah, I think I think you know what you're doing. Well, you can't because you won't get it immediately. Yeah, you should. God. I, I might I might do it. I don't know. It's on Comicsology. You can get it immediately if you want. Right, but Cole, I think Cole is implying he would prefer. No, not get the to print do. versions. They're very nice. Get the yeah. get the volumes no, no, no. on I, Amazon. I think, it, it, in my experience of digital comic books. There is something that is lost in a digital comic book, Agreed. simply in the presentation. Mm-hmm. It is like, uh, I don't know. It, it's like, the, I think there's something important about being able to see the entire page as it was originally drawn in a comic book. Because mm-hmm. um, the, the page is like context, like it is not necessarily uh, frame to frame. You can do that frame, in comicsology. Fr- comicsology. Yeah, but it's not like real. <laughs> for, for me, for me, Comicsology is really good for like the 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 weekly or the monthly comic you'll read once and not go back and read. But if it's mm-hmm. something you really love and you plan to reread it, I agree. I think that there is a lot yeah. of additional. I need to get the, the physical it. copies. No, but what's yeah. funny is Dan. I, I have why I don't know why you brought it up. I kid you not. Completely before you said a word of saga. My browser was open to the volume six page because I, I, I really, I complete, I swear to God, very spooky uh, because I realized I, I needed to pre order it so I didn't forget. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're weirding me out because I'm like, I, I just for some reason I was like, huh, I wonder if, I wonder if they released another one. So Saga is the thing that I, I get it on Comicsology and I auto subscribe so that mm. it just like shows up in there. And I only, because they don't come out that, is it monthly? I think so. Uh, uh, yes, they don't come out that frequently. So I read them when I, whenever I go home, whenever I'm on the train, for whatever reason, I, it occurs to me, I'm like, aha, I wonder how many Saga comics I've racked up since the last time I went home. So from uh, when I went home for Christmas until Easter, I had like a nice half hour's worth of Saga reading yeah. to do. It was fantastic. Yeah, I love, the, I, I love doing it with the volumes because you can kind of just get a chunk of the story all at once. Yeah, but you have to wait so long. I Although, know. it is like, if you ever... Well, here's what I don't understand, and maybe as a comic reader you can help me here. If if a comic only comes out monthly, and Saga's the only comic I've read, an ongoing comic, I've gone through a backlogs of a couple other ones. But, so, you read last month's comic, you read it through, and you're like, okay, cool. Or, more typically, like you read up to the point where they're still releasing them. You wait a month, you go back, and now you've totally forgotten everything that happened. No. I do. I, I don't. I don't. Well, first of all, to be honest, though, I don't... No, I read a few... There was a... I haven't been into comic books for a little while. The span where I was, I was reading some monthlies, and to be honest, they weren't... But they were kind of... It was Marvel kind of stuff where there wasn't a as sweeping a story as you get in something with Saga. So it really wasn't the end of the world if you didn't specifically remember the previous one. And to be honest... Okay. A lot of the Marvel type comics start with a previously on. Okay. A previously yes. on page. Saga definitely does not. Right. So those help as well. Interesting. Yeah, I would say Saga is the exception, not the rule. Most most of your average kind of what you would consider to be a standard comic book, um, the story is not particularly dense. And there is a lot of reminders at the beginning for exactly that reason. Oh my god! I nearly went bankrupt on Comicsology. I had to stop because <laughs> you said auto subscribe, and you're like, "This is great." And right. Then, uh, I gotta, you know, I should maybe start up Marvel Unlimited again. I had that for a little while, and that was great. We're, we're so far off topic. <laughs> um, this is ludicrous. I, I can keep you'll, you'll, this off topic. I have another question, but 
Okay. Well, so you'll be happy to know I ordered Saga Volume 1. Yeah. It's, it's on the way. You'll be very glad you did. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure. Have I not, like, I was talking to someone about this uh, a couple weekends ago where I think that Saga is the ultimate, it's the best way to be introduced to comics, I think, because it's so well, it brings together so many things that can only be done in comics. Mm -hmm. You can't. Like maybe maybe you told me this or brought this to my attention, Sean. But you can't make a movie or or an HBO miniseries. It's like it's that too fucking weird. Yeah. It's like no way. And I, and I am liking it. I was like, the only thing that comes close is the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like before that came out, someone was like, we're gonna have a talking raccoon main character. Like carries a <laughs> rocket launcher. Like there's a tree. You'd be like, okay, that's pretty weird. This is ten times weirder. <laughs> uh, it's but so weird. good. Like, not navel-gazing weird, where it's just weird for weird sake. Weird because it's the on- this medium is the only way you can tell this story. And the art style is fantastic as well. So Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a fun read. Nice. I, if I remember correctly, you first picked it when Mike was on the show. No, my friend oh, TJ friend. was on the show. Yes. Picked it. Okay. Yes. It's all coming yes. back to me. Okay. He introduced us all to this madness. And it was fantastic. All yeah. right. All right. Did you have? Did anyone have anything else? I have another topic that's. Go not- ahead, Dan. Sure, <laughs> just throw it out. Did there. everyone else see the new Rogue One trailer? Yes. Yeah. What I do you all think? I didn't understand any of it. I don't know. There's nothing yeah. to understand. I I, I I I'm psyched about it. There were How can I not be excited? And explosions to know what and lasers before and before you hope. I'm gonna go see it. Sean, that was all. Yeah, those were all yeah. the things you highlighted as your yeah, favorite the, parts of the original trailer. The big trailer. robots on the two legs. It was like. It yeah, was, it was sweet. I'm psyched. Yeah, I, I so I listened to. Do you still listen to to Ian Landsman's podcast, Dan? Or do you ever I don't listen know to? If it? I have ever listened to Ian Landsman's podcast. So he had a he had one podcast a while ago that I stopped listening to, but they started a new one called Anything But Code, and he just has guests on, and they talk about like most of them are technology people, but they talk about not not programming so they talk about like business things it's pretty good i i i've enjoyed that recently but they did like an emergency session where they broke <laughs> down wh- where they broke down the new star wars trailer it was it was really good um but yeah i'm pretty excited about it and so so in any case i, I bring that up because they mentioned uh he mentioned being really excited to see darth vader like do stuff like be a badass it's sort of like implied that darth vader is 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 like uh, feared throughout the galaxy uh in a new hope and and but you never see that in episode three it's like you know he old anakin dies and he becomes darth vader but like that that gap is unfilled so i think that that'll be cool to see yeah uh I am I'm excited. I'm excited for no like Jedi as characters. I think that's going to be really interesting. Mm. I I'm liking like like the sort of heistish sort of feel we get out of this, like an Ocean's Eleven in space sort of thing. Yeah, would be super awesome. Uh, I'm also another thing is because of the the Rebel Force Radio podcast, uh, I finally broke down. I bought the last two episodes of the most recent season of Star Wars Rebels. Because they were talking about it a lot in there. And I, I suspect that this is how this show goes. Only by the episodes that everyone talks about. But those last two were amazing. Uh, and you see Darth Vader being a badass. Like you see, not mm-hmm. even, a, but you get this part of Darth Vader where uh, he's sort of, I won't spoil it, but he's confronted as Darth Vader with something from his past. And you see him him deal with that. And you get this sense that like, like I had this realization from that episode that Darth Vader isn't insane. He is like traumatized, and the only way for him to cope with what he's done is to destroy anything that reminds him of who he was. Because <laughs> then he can pretend that that never happened or that he was right. Uh, mm. And I was like, oh, sudden so like, why couldn't they have done that in the prequels? Like, oh, the prequels just like all of a sudden, oh, okay, cool, I'm evil now. Uh, Yep, I'm just killing people. Yeah. Uh, 
I think it was it was also quite good. You get this. I will say you get this scene where Darth Vader uh, is floating down from the sky on a Tie Fighter. Uh, it's it's pretty good. I have one gripe about that episode that if any of you watch it, I can I can tell you. At Jazz Dan on Twitter, hit him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'll spoil I... it all on Twitter. <laughs> No, honestly, my favorite thing about Star Wars is not necessarily even Darth Vader or the characters. I just love the 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 cinematic style and the storytelling style and the visuals and and you could you could tell any story using that medium and I am 100% on board. So What do you think that is? You know, I I'm sure there's some really smart professor type critic who can give you a much better <laughs> explanation than I could but I think it's a combination of the 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 a lot of wide shots a lot of uh landscapes a lot of uh, uh contrasting colors so especially between scenes uh there's all the little tips and tricks that again I'm not an expert in defining but when you watch it and this was when I was doing my little live tweet of my first watch through, that was the first thing that really grabbed me. Like, whoa, especially in like New Hope, some of those really wide shots. Like, you would rarely see movies of just desert for days. And you get the scope of what you're watching. Or like the big spaceships. You, you really, you get a, a sort of an epic feeling from it. I love that. And then you throw in the big explosions, and which aren't, <laughs> which appear anyway, not to be overdone with CGI. And they appear to look somewhat practical, which I enjoyed about episode seven. Um, right. So uh, that's exciting. What is, so uh, we, uh, man, we could fill a whole episode, and we we have at yes. this point. But my last question for you, Sean, specifically is: Why do you, and if so, why? Like, do you think that Darth Vader is a great villain in the context of you having watched it in twenty fifteen? Sure. sure. And and if so, why or why not? Um. So. For the record, I did not finish the prequels, so I'm I'm not going to count those. Yeah, don't. <laughs> just just in the original trilogy, do I think Darth Vader is a badass? Because um, no, no, I didn't say badass. Like many, many, oh, good many people villain. have him number one and like greatest oh, villains of all you know, time. I don't agree with that. I I don't agree with that. I think he's a a good on screen villain. You know where 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 you got the arm crush and you got. But to be honest, I, there's not a depth of character there that I find appealing. I, I really don't. Um, I just think he's a, he he's almost is a, a generic villain. I, I don't nothing really attracts me to him, and I don't find him. If I had to list the the five most important characters in the, in the original trilogy, I don't even know if he'd be in the top three. Because. <laughs> Wow, that is a controversial opinion. It is. I, well, it really is. And to be honest, that's what I kind of like about telling other stories in the Star Wars universe. I want more. To be mm. honest, I'd like him to be a good villain. I just think that it's kind of one-dimensional for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think in the in the trilogy, he was... Like, you didn't get a lot of him because the movie wasn't really about him. Right. You knew he was bad. He showed he was bad. He was bad. Right. Right. And that's what, like, that's what I want to know about, like... How did he become, like, I don't know. They should have some prequels, and then we can find out how he became that way. <laughs> Man, uh, we got to come up with all the ideas. Oh. <laughs> I'm so, in, in any case, I'm looking forward to Rogue One. Yeah, yes. me too. It should be good. Make sure you buy it in the winter movie draft. Um, <laughs> we are burning through time like it's nobody's business. <laughs> um, we've done one story. <laughs> um... What is technology? Yeah. Uh, well, how about how about Facebook live streaming? This seems relevant to your interest, John. Um. Well, Dan, we can. Unless it's not, and then we can just skip it. No. Well, we're 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 I think out of time. We, oh. We've literally we're at we're at the fifty minute mark. Oh. So we can. All right. I, in in one hundred and twenty we... characters or less. There you go. How excited are you about Facebook of uh, streaming video? As a marketing person and a person who produces video. Sure. Interesting for brands and celebrities, really lame for my friends. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. well, now, yeah, so so count, as, like... as, as celebrities ourselves and also a brand <laughs> in our Don't Panic and Coffee and Beer uh, podcast networks, 
how excited are you for Facebook? If, live it, put it this way: if they make it reasonably easy enough, we'll stream live on Facebook. I've got no problem with <laughs> yeah. that. I think it's great. I, Everything else honestly, is impossible. I think I think our live stream would do pretty well on Facebook. Well, yeah, I I that but that's my problem is is how does this work with timeline? Because our posts on Facebook, we've got that's what true. three thousand likes. Nobody sees them because their algorithms are a joke. <laughs> we should probably. No, oh, I mean their algorithms are are designed well, we to get you paid. We could do a better job. I'll money. be the first to admit um, I don't do a great job. That's on me. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I was gonna say, I was gonna say though. I feel like we could should just stream it as one of our personal accounts, and we'd probably do better. Well, honestly, you can tell the difference <laughs> because uh, when we just post, it doesn't do great. When like yeah. I share it or something, it, it, there is a bit of a jump. So, you know, you can you can tell the difference, but I. I think it's int- I like Periscope. I don't use it very often, but you know, you got to give me a reason to watch something. If you give me a reason to watch something, this is what interests me. The other story we have in the rundown that we're not going to get to is uh, Twitter partnering with the NFL to stream ten games, uh, Thursday night football games this fall. Uh, they paid a bunch of money. How's for the that going to work? It's not going to be on Periscope, right? Well, that's a really good question. They don't know yet. I okay. think. It would be very interesting. Some, engi- some engineering team is in for a really rough yes. next couple of months. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine the people they've got to put on this? Hey, but, so... Uh... But, but they did say that there would be some kind of second screen type experience <laughs> where you can watch the game, but you can also sure choose to watch the game with a feed. Yeah. Uh, a curated feed of tweets during the game. I'm really excited for this. Absolutely. All of this exists. I know. I know. <laughs> Twitter's just got to build it. Um so I'm excited, but that is a good application of live video. Yeah. You know, that's something to get me to watch. But if, you know, Dan's like, oh, look, I'm, uh, I'm eating this really great sandwich. Watch me eat this sandwich. I- You'd not- watch it. Don't lie. Well, for you, Dan, because you eat interesting food. Watch me eat this cronut. I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm totally going to periscope my next cronut. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to be Dan Miller. I want to live in his you'll, you'll have to wake up at 8 a.m. to watch it, though. Is that okay? Uh, I'm up at 8 a.m. It's live, no recordings. That's right. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. So I am interested. But um, but as with Facebook, uh, who knows? They throw a lot of things at the wall. Who knows? Now, what here's an say. idea I just had, so obviously it's good. Uh, Twitter, t- Twitter TV. So, like, Twitter gets a bunch of these live streaming deals, and you have the Twitter app on your PS4 or Apple TV or whatever. And you you watch something with the Twitter experience with like yeah yeah they they already said they're gonna do uh, apps for the different devices uh, I'm totally on board with so. that but where yeah but they are like an NFL game you would go on Twitter to watch the football game right it wouldn't just be someone in Russia driving around this the tundra like and you're watching that like have that also. Right. You like YouTube, but for live video. Yeah, someone Twitter. should do it. Who better than Twitter, I guess. Yeah, I th- well, I think that Twitter has a lot of like those deals. Like they seem to be pretty. Oh yeah, they're big in con- But but Facebook, I mean, part of this video story is that they're paying. They are Facebook is paying brands to do content, like BuzzFeed and those guys, to do content on their platform. So doesn't YouTube do this too, where they're like their incubator thing? They have yeah. like their own movie studio. Yeah, and they they pour cash into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. We got to get to picks. Okay. Okay. Picks. We do them every week. It's, we each bring in something we're pretty jazzed about, uh, share it with the world. And we're going to start with what I feel is the one person we never start with, which is Dan Miller. <laughs> I feel like I always pick me or Cole because we're at the top and the bottom of the list. So I think it's fair Dan <laughs> goes first this week. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, you're going to be a little disappointed. But maybe not. Uh, I'm running pretty low on picks these days because a lot of the things I've picked have just been... Actually, I'm going to have a double pick. So my first pick is Purple Safari, also known as the Safari Safari Developer Preview, which is just like a, a cutting-edge version of Safari you can install on the Mac that is noticeably faster and comes with a bunch of nice features, especially for developers developing uh, stuff with the new standards. Uh, so pick it up. It's free. It... it uh, it works with all of your iCloud stuff. It updates the App Store. It's great, uh, so you don't have to worry about having and uh, having like weird versions of Safari lying around. You'll you'll still have both, but this one can like you just check the use this browser and it boop everything works. Uh, the other thing I picked a while ago, The Witcher Three, 
And then on Sunday, after I had recovered from Friday, uh, I decided to pick up the uh, the Witcher 3 uh, expansion that came out a while ago, expansion DLC, called Hearts of Stone. Uh, and it is like, I, I really like the game, and I have downloaded DLC for games before, and it's always been like, oh, cool, you get like this one extra quest that they tack on. This was like, this was serious. I mean, it was $10, but it was... And I am still not done. It is a serious amount of content. And the storyline for the the expansion is incredible. You you basically you make a deal with someone who I'm pretty sure is the devil. Mm-hmm. Uh like right like straight out of like the devil came down to Georgia style uh <laughs> uh t- like tricks in the contract and all this stuff. Uh and he like forces you to do these things. Uh, and like Game of Thrones, some of the like the devil's not a nice guy. Some of these cutscenes with him are uh, are are pretty interesting. Uh, so if you like Game of Thrones, a play The Witcher. Uh, game of the Year 2015 for me, definitely best game I've played since The Last of Us. Uh, and then when you're done, don't worry. There's like at least, God, at least 20 hours more of content. I, I spent a lot of time on Sunday, and I'm like not anywhere near done. <laughs> uh, so check out the heart, Hearts of Stone. Neat. Nice. Double pick. I like it. Good stuff. The links, of course, will be on our website. Uh, I'm going to jump in and go next, and we'll let Colby close us out. Um, I've talked on the show uh, several times before about Pebble. Um, previously the Pebble Steel and now the Pebble Time Steel. I've owned both. I love me some Pebble. Um, problem is, very rarely do I find new apps for Pebble. Like, it's really good at what it does, but I never find anything new. Um, and I found something new. So, it's called Snowy, S-N-O-W-Y, and you can get it at mydogsnowy.com. Um, and it is what they call a personal assistant for Pebble Time. You have to have the time, the time stealer, the time round. Um, it's essentially voice commands, for your Pebble, um, you know, I, I'm going to do my little mini demo. I've got my watch here. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of commands. Um, I've set it as my quick action, so you press and hold your button to do your quick action. And let's see if this works. And it says listening. What's the forecast in Pittsfield? And there we go. So it sends it out, and pretty quickly, there you go. I see multiple results for that location. Could you be more specific? <laughs> What's the weather for Pittsfield, Massachusetts? And of course, the Pebble has the microphone built in. It says fetching data. And then, just like that, the weather for Pittsfield, Massachusetts, it's 42 out. Uh, it is quite cold. It's overcast. And you can do all everything from what time is it, what's the weather. Uh, you can set reminders, set calendar events. Um, you can get all kind of, you know, stocks and restaurants and directions and it'll do math and it'll, it'll translate words, which I've never actually tried. So I'm going to try that. Um, let's see. What is panic in German? Well, let's see what it says. Now, unlike Siri, it doesn't talk back to you panic, but with a K. Okay. I probably could have guessed that. Um, <laughs> But anyway, and you can use ift and make your own talking recipes. Anyway, all said, it's kind of a cool new feature that I hadn't done in Pebble. I think it's neat. It's two ninety nine, so you do have to pay for it, but I think it's worth it, and uh, it's a fun little thing to play around with on your Pebble. MyDogSnowy.com or in the Pebble app store. Check it out. Nice. Nice. Um, let's go on to something a lot bigger than a smartwatch. Colby, what do you have uh, for us? Indeed. So uh, I bought one of the new smaller iPad Pros, uh, and I think it's pretty great. It's so for context. Uh, we mentioned earlier in the show, but I, I, my other i, my previous iPad was an iPad Two, which I've had since. Uh, my what, other 2000... iPad Surface Book Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um no say so i've had that ipad since like 2010 or 2011 probably um so it's been a little while um what is it now 2016 so that's like five years so it's a little dated 
Uh, it still works mostly, but it's really slow. So just on speed alone, like apps open really fast, and that's awesome. Um, the the funky screen stuff it does, like the t- true tone stuff, is not like it's not something you notice day to day. But if you turn it off, the contrast is certainly noticeable. That's super cool. Uh, and I also really like the Apple Pencil for doing stuff. I've been using a, I've been mostly using it with uh, that app Paper by Fifty Three. Um, which is an app I had used before, like without uh, a stylus, but it's really fun with the Apple Pencil. Um, I've used it to like brainstorm stuff. There are different like, so the thing I really like is one, there are different like writing instruments. So there's like, you know, a pen or a pencil. And then as you're writing, you can like write over things and you can also like erase or kind of like smudge it out with your finger. Um, and it's, it's like, it really feels a lot like writing on paper, but so much less. I don't know, like you, there's nothing you can't just undo, but at the same time, you can also like quickly like gloss over stuff by just like smudging it out with your finger. And I think it's really neat. Uh, so I don't know, I guess I'll report back. I've had it for like a little more than a week now, uh, but I think it's fun. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> and you're and you're still glad you got the pro version. Oh yeah, definitely. Big well, so the non pro version doesn't work with the the, the pen. That's yeah. very true. Very neat. Well, I we... did not I did not splurge for the the keyboard. Mm. So we I can can't get other keyboards though. So yeah. I, and I, how much is the Apple one? It's expensive. Is one hundred and fifty dollars? Oh, yeah. you can get good ones for like fifty. That's crazy. Yeah. So that that was not a thing that I was super interested in. Reasonable. But, right. Reasonable. Uh, well, that's fantastic. You can get links to all the picks on the website, don'tpack.io, accompanying this episode. Um, that's it. We're done with the show. I will go through the regular spiel, which is you should go to our website, don'tpanic.io. There we have all the links to all the episodes, audio, video, our picks, of course. Also, where you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, most major podcast apps, uh, or via RSS. And, of course, you can follow us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter, Don't Panic Show at gmail.com for email, facebook.com slash Don't Panic Show. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll have more platforms by next week. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and lastly, live Monday nights, roughly 10 p.m. I will say between 10 and 10.30 p.m., <laughs> uh, depending on how much technical difficulty we have. Um, at twitch.tv slash don't panic show. You can go there uh, and enjoy the show live. We'd like you to join us live. You can chat with us in the chat room. We'll chat back. Um, and of course, you can subscribe to us on Twitter or on Twitch because we post when we go live Monday nights. Um, we will be back next week with more technology news. Um, uh, and I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. I, I guess I can quickly tease, of course, gamenights.tv, where we play Dungeons & Dragons. We'll have a new episode this week where we meet a new character introduced to our journey. Uh, it's going to be a can't-miss episode, and it'll be on the feed later this week. And we'll also have a new episode of Up for Debate. We're talking spring and everything related to spring, from spring cleaning to filing your taxes to Easter. We're going to talk about it all at upfordebate.tv. I think that's everything, gentlemen. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think you about covered it. We've done it all. That is it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. On behalf of Colby and Dan, this is Sean wishing you farewell and hoping we'll see you next time for a brand new Don't Panic.